Stand, please. Heavenly Father, again, I want to thank you for this day of life. Thank you, Father, for bringing us safely to this meeting this evening. And thank you, Father, so much for all the blessings we have. I pray, Father, as we begin this new year, that our government at the federal level will work together, be more civil. We need a kinder, gentler nation. Help us at the tribe work together and do the, the good work for our people. Thank you for all the blessings, the assets that we have, the resources. Help us be good stewards of, of those resources, Father. I pray for those in harm's way today. I pray for those that lost loved ones in the, in the recent shooting. There's a lot of hurt and, and need out there, and you know all about it. And you're the one who can help them, Father, as no other one can. I pray now that in this meeting that we would you would bless us all, bless our chairman, help us make good decisions for our people, and forgive us where we fail. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Roll call, please, Here. Chris now? Here. Chris So? Bill Anglin? Here. Bill John Baker? Here. Jack Baker? Here. Marley Buzzer? Here. Julia Coates? Here. Bradley Cobb? Aw, Joe Crittenden? Here. Jody Fishingbrock? Here. Meredith Fraley? Are you here? Yes, Janelle here. Fulbright? Here. Don Garvin? Here. Chuck Hoskin Jr.? Here. Tana Glory Jordan? Present. David Thornton? Kara Cowan Watts? Aw, honey. John Masters? Would you have a Mr. Chair, John yeah. still is not uh, well. He just couldn't make it to the meeting again today. So hopefully you'll uh, you remember him in his prayers. You know, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to approve on the December 13th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Moving down to the reports. Uh, Management Resources, Angela Drew. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, committee members. Good afternoon. Um, you've got my report in your packets, and I've had several of you ask me questions prior to the meeting getting started, so um, if you guys want to ask questions on the report, and then I can give you some responses to the questions prior to the meeting, I can do that. How many questions for Angela? Yes, Carol. I don't have any questions. I just want to say thank you for the Christmas parades and floats because that was difficult. <coughs> Logistically difficult, and all the people I encountered for ours were excellent and outstanding, and I'm sure it was the same for the other districts. So thank you to you and your staff for all that. You're welcome. I'll let the staff know that uh, we have folks that uh, dedicate a lot of their time during those parades to working after hours, and we work real closely with Frida, and so those folks do put in a lot of work during the month of December, so I'll pass that on, and thank you. I have one, one thing. So uh, I don't know if it was passed on, but if, while we're storing Christmas decorations, that as long as they're whole, even if they're slightly damaged, the Clemore Veterans Center needs like replacement trees and stuff. Oh, okay. And any kind of decorations, and we'll get that donation resolution made. So instead of storing it or throwing it away, they can make use of it. Very good. Let me take those. Thank you. Any more questions for Angela? Yes, sir. Uh, not a question, but I just want to. <clears throat> For the record, Angela, is, is to see what's going on on some uh, construction projects on that Leach Kenwood Road there. So I did get one it. response from Pat, and he said that some of our staff have heard that a mile or two uh, south of Kenwood. Mm -hmm. That we'll make sure that that's the direction he said. I'm sorry, a mile or two west of Kenwood, that there may be some construction. Of chicken houses going on, but we're going to keep checking okay. into that well, and see we'll what. Check into it because I've yeah. just recently heard about that. And I'll report to you once okay. we find out. This time. Uh, Angela, I noticed where we had bid out the Kirk property here at Calcon. Have we got all the horses off of there yet and turned that over to the successful bidder? And when do they take over? 
situation there became that it's the same bidder ended up with that property because the, the one that did the highest, he actually backed off. Well, but our agreement was that they have no more than 50 units of horses. Right, and, and they are supposed to cull those horses down. And when will that occur? Because they have overgrazed that to a point where even if you try to bid it out again next year, that's going to start being your primary problem is we've got too many units on the, on the property and they're, they're overgrazing it. And I've had a lot of folks that have complained to me that said, hey, we'd be interested in that property except for the fact that we're going to get it and it's going to take nine months to get it back into some shape where we can use it, but we only have a 12-month lease. Right. I'll get with Butch Garner. He does all of our lease compliance, mm -hmm. and that's one of his units, and find out how long that they've been given to get those numbers in order. And I was correct. It's 50 horses, right? I think that's right. Yeah, and, yeah. of course, that's the way I come to work every day. And I can, I, I know, even though I went to Mulberg, I can count a lot better than 50. And <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of horses there. I'll find out for you what okay. the animal units are that have been on that unit, just so you'll know what they've been running and uh, the date as to when they've been told they have to be in check. And Linda, how many um, infractions do they get before we can take that lease back? <clears throat> well, they'll have, after notice, it's five days, and then if they don't comply, then they can be asked So we will definitely enforce that because you're absolutely correct. If we allow it to continue, it will be a situation where no one else will have time to get it in shape, which then means we would have to take it out mm -hmm. of the lease process, us get it back in shape before anybody else would even be interested in. And I just hate to see any place overgrazed. And, and horses are, I mean, we got, I've got a lot of horses at our farm, and I can tell you they're the worst in the world about they leave nothing but the dirt. I, I, I don't have anything against horses because we got a bunch of them, but they will graze one place down to where it is bare dirt before they move on. They're not like a cow that moves around and catches a patch here and there. They, they'll graze it to They're the dirt. They're hard on it. Yeah. yeah, they really are. So we'll look into that and I'll get you a Thank report. Councilor uh -huh. McGarr, I was wanting to know how many acres we're talking about. How many acres? Was I think it was 300 plus, wasn't it, acreage? Linda, on that one lease, is it broke down? Is it the whole 300 or they just have 160 It's the whole 300. Yeah. I think it's 300 plus. Just a little over 300. 324? 324, 330. Yeah, that place had excellent hay meadows on it, and now they're not going to be able to use them for hay meadows because they let the horses overgraze in them. How long has this been going on? Now, I, I don't, uh, when did we take the Kirk place? I, I don't remember when we bought the Kirk place. Six. Two Six. years. And the horses have probably been there two years, haven't they? Almost that yeah. long. Has David always just run horses? I know he failed. No, this is not David. This is a, uh, this is a woman. Yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. this guy's daughter that's got mm -hmm. it. It's not part of the Mustang program, is it? The, the no. Program? Thank you, Any more questions for Angela? Now, you had some uh, questions that you were going to bring up? Well, I was just going to mention to Jody that I've got Pat checking on whether or not that appraisal has come back, and he said once he gets with the lady that's working on that, he'll let me know. So if he doesn't get it while I'm up here, then I'll let you know before the meeting's over, um, and Mr. Snell, I'll get with my staff on the uh, talking about the possibility of designating some camping areas on tribal land, not just during hunting, but um, we'll discuss that and get some information back to you on that as well. Yeah, good. I think that was it. Thank you. You're welcome. We're going to down to Rough State Services, Linda Dawson. Good afternoon. I believe you 
Yeah. Yeah. You have my report too. Is there any questions? I, I just have one. I'm curious what IHS facilities we're looking at acquiring. Which ones to acquire? Yeah. Uh, there's the uh, North Street property, which used to be okay. a part of the Hastings Hospital. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's um, less than an acre, I believe, over yes. there. Then there is the Hastings Hospital facility itself, the um, Redbird Smith facility in uh, Salisaw, and then to mm -hmm. acquire the the buildings that are in, at the Mankiller Clinic. Even though we own the land and trust, they still have an interest in the buildings themselves, and we wanted to take their title off of that. Right. Those are good. Those are the property. You've been in there for years. Right. You got to see it. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to thank both Linda and Angela for providing us the uh, bid reports recently on the the acreage that you're bidding now. I think that has been quite an education for all of us. We're getting good bids on them, by the way. I think we're getting real good bids because the Farmers and ranchers I hear from say it had been hard for them to contemplate bidding as much as what you all are getting as long as we can keep the units down to what our agreement said. But I want to commend you all for providing that to this body so that we can act as good stewards towards the property that we own. Thank, Thank you all. One of the things you'll be seeing coming up, Tina, on this is that we're getting ready to start our process soon on the next bid cycle, which would be another five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will start January 2012. And so what we'll be doing, and Angie and I will be working on this, on uh, inspecting the fences, uh, looking at the property, showing people the property on what we're looking at on leasing, and, uh, and we'll probably be make, compiling a report on what type of fence is they are, there are, uh, how many ponds there are, as well as what kind of units it will take. So we're going to be working on that for this year to show what kind of quality property that we have to offer. And, and just one additional thing that I would, I would suggest to the whole council, they can't watch daily all the properties that we own. But we are in the counties where the property's at, and I would ask each and every one of y'all, go by and check the property that Cherokee Nation owns. And if there's a problem, call these ladies because we're, we, need to be, we need to be the ones watching that property. They can't send someone every day, but we can be your eyes and ears. And if we see it's being overgrazed or it's not being uh, fertilized or the fences are not being kept up or something of that nature, we need to report it to them so that they can follow up on it. And by knowing where the bids are being done at, that allows me the opportunity to go look at that property and make sure that your contractual obligations are being met. Yes, sir. One of the things, too, we have a copy of just a, a generalized lease agreement. It will tell you all of the things that that lessee, we, the standards we're holding them to. They shouldn't have dead cattle on the unit. They shouldn't leave twine laying behind from when they feed hay. There's a number of things that if you know and are aware of what standards we're holding them to, if you see those things, it is an extra set of eyes for us because we do have lease compliance monitors, but they're covering thousands of acres, and so any help that we can get is appreciated. And then one other thing to know is um, during the last lease cycle, because you're going to have a lot of constituents that are current lessees, that when we get ready to do the new lease cycle, our lease compliance, it, it's mainly our, our lease compliance individuals that when people want to lease a piece of property and they're not exactly sure where it's located, it's their job to take those individuals and show them where the units are. And, you know, we had a lot of uh, lessees that were very aggravated because they said, well, you were taking people out and showing them my lease unit and encouraging them to bid on it. And so if you have any constituents that come to you, just remind them that that's their job. If someone's interested in looking at a unit, that's their job is to show it to them. And of course, you know, folks hope to get to keep their units because if it's a good unit and they've put some work into it, you hate to lose it. But that's what those 
gentlemen part of what they're hired to do. Would, would you all be kind enough to send each one of us the latest uh, lease so that we could review those terms again? We'll do that. I know that we are planning on doing another revisit of it before we issue it, but we'll let you have the one that we've got. All right. You know, we still need some type of law enforcement on our properties. There's a lot of, like the walnut trees get cut, and the uh, cattle panels, you know, hundreds of dollars of the cattle panels were stolen up in the Kenwood area the last couple of years. Yes. And another thing we're looking at from the natural resources perspective is we, we have some folks that, um, due to age and health issues, um, are looking at retiring. And we may not fill those positions with the same title. And we may actually be looking at having the opportunity, because part of not having conservation officers right. is the fact that um, you know, we were trying to move and staying within our employment numbers. And so we may look at trying to change up some titles if that will work out. That would be so, good. Yes. So we're looking at that. And we have a lot of title members that are actually interested in that field of work. So thank you. More questions for Linda? Thank you, Linda. Okay. Thank you. We were on the environmental programs. Uh, Tom Elkins. Mr. Chair, in yes. the Claremore or not the Claremore Federal Building. Yes. You were going to have a meeting. And you were supposed to update. They hadn't got to it yet, but we are we are almost contemplating sending something to the solicitor saying, "How about this?" <laughs> okay. Because we do we do need something out of it. Because I think we're going on six or seven years. So. Yeah, it is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I apologize. Good afternoon. I hope you have our report in front of you. Uh, we hadn't been as timely in, past, in times past as uh, getting it uh, submitted, so I hope we have this time. But uh, there's just a few things I'd like to either point out or to speak to. Uh, we did have a uh, meeting here at the, the new gym, the place where they play. Um, EPA and we hosted a TMDL total maximum daily load for phosphorus for the Illinois River a meeting concerning that uh, they're having uh, uh, in 18 month period they'll probably have six eight ten of those meetings and uh, they asked that we have another one here uh, probably because of the barbecue that we fed them but uh, it, it was a very good meeting we had about a hundred people uh, I, I would say if they weren't the bureaucrats, there were probably uh, the people besides that were probably uh, all Cherokee citizens, or most, I would say. So it, it was really a good meeting. Um, I do want to point out that on our Department of Energy projects, we had uh, went to 11 projects. We've had to push that back to 10. Um, we had planned on having two compressed natural gas facilities, refueling sites. One in Rowland and one here at the Outpost One. And um, when I was doing research on these, uh, I had to, well, at the nation, we had to uh, divvy up money and, you know, and budget that. And uh, for the two sites, we put out so much money. Actually, I bumped it up about 20% just so I'd have a buffer. And I think we came out about 50% over budget on both of those. So we came back, and uh, there's so much of that work being done right now throughout the country. Uh, compressed natural gas is really going, and uh, uh, those units are just skyrocketing. So uh, we're just going to have one here at the complex. Uh, our fleet is here. It leaves from here, comes back to here for the most part. Um, and we're hoping that we'll take advantage of that and uh, get a lot of our vehicles either <laughs> transitioned over to that or... Uh, made into compressed natural gas. Uh, and one last point I wanted to uh, speak about was uh, Councilor Thornton had asked me to look on the last meeting about uh, re uh, earthquakes caused by uh, saltwater injection or injections of any type. And I did do some research on it. 
actually there's quite a bit of research on that and they have been caused all over the world. Uh, I read some about Colorado, Germany, Ontario, uh, Ohio, Texas, China, and other places. They're generally in places where they're just pin cushioned, uh, where the injection wells or wells of any site are just all over, uh, you know, just pin cushioned throughout the territory. Uh, most of the, uh, the earthquakes that they can attribute to that are uh, minor ones. Uh, just three point so or, or small right around that area uh, but the damage that they associated with that is very minimal um, and so it's really you know from a scientific standpoint it's almost negligible but it does occur it does occur Councilman Oscar I, I, I'm not familiar with the research is that because they're largely in rural areas I mean if one were to hit a town the size of it is more damage to be expected? I don't know much about it. I imagine it would. I, I didn't see a correlation to there, um, but I do imagine most of those are in rural areas uh, where they're actually pin cushioned. Uh, you know, if you get out western Oklahoma, like where there's a lot of, uh, like in Seminole County, I know that place pretty well because I've done a lot of uh, response in that area. I, don't, I have heard of some earthquakes being out there, not really associated with that, but there are some out there in that territory, and that place is just being cushioned with wells, and uh, their, their water is shot. It's gone. But a lot of that uh, oil industry out there was done in the 20s and 30s, and most of the uh, means of gathering oil that was used then was really poor. A lot of that, a lot of that oil was just pooled onto the surface, and... Uh, the methods that we use now to get oil are, are completely different for the most part. More questions, Tom? Thank you. Thanks, Tom. We were on down to old business, non pending. <coughs> now to new business. We have one. Gareth? It's moved for approval. This is additions to our IRB inventory as approved by Michael Lynn and the Rhodes program that they've already prepped and provided for the federal requirements. Second motion, Carter. Yes. I would like to be added as a sponsor since two of the roads concerned are Cherokee County roads. That would be excellent, Mr. Chair. Okay. Oh, and, uh, That's what I, and I believe Councilwoman Fishing Hawk is, would like to be included. And Janelle, is there anyone that would not like to be included? Okay. <laughs> Councilman Anglin has indicated he wants to be added to the list as well of sponsors. And Councilman Garvin. Okay. You got here a second. It was Garvin, Councilman Garvin, seconded. Do we have a discussion? All in favor of this motion? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Yes, sir. Angela. Kathleen responded, and the Kirk property is 377 acres. When the count made an inspection last Wednesday, the lessee was not over his numbers. He just wasn't utilizing all the acreage. And so he's been asked to make sure he lets that number of horses use the entire acreage so as not to overgraze specific areas. So they visit with him on that, but please keep an eye on that for us. And it is 50. Yes, right if it's horses. Yes. Okay. And then uh, Councilwoman Fishenhoff, so that, that property near Siloam, we're still waiting on the appraisal to come back. No. Thank you. Councilor, are you finished? Yeah, yes, thank you. Did I have another hand? Councilman Cobb? No, I was just making sure she did. We're going down for your announcements. The next meeting will be held Monday, February 14th, 4 o'clock.
I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Adjourn. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. 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 Aye.